Hello everybody. Right, so now we're going to go into the drive-by-wire setup. We are using a Link G4X Extreme ECU and the engine in question is a 3UZFE VVTi. Right, so obviously we've got our electronic throttle heading tab on the side here, which we'll click on. We're not using two throttles, we're just using one, so we're not interested in that one over there. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go and put it into setup mode. So again, you might get yours and it is in uh, off or disabled mode from there. So the first thing you want to do is put it into setup mode while you do all the settings, because as you can see, once it goes to on, it locks everything so you can't do anything at all. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that our outputs are correct. So again, we have done a video on all the outputs. If you want to watch that, that goes through setting everything up, but we'll just go through this as part of the drive-by-wire. So our PWM output is 9 and 10, so auxiliary 9 and 10 is our outputs from there. So we're going to use auxiliary 9 and 10 in that setup over there. Now again, the link uses a specific relay to control the throttle and that's how they turn it off and on. So if you have a look under the wiring information tab and you go into output wiring and into e-throttle and you go just go generic e-throttle wiring, you'll see there's your e-throttle relay. So it controls the power which goes to if I look here, you'll see there it says plus 14 volts for auxiliary 9 and 10. I've labeled it electronically controlled throttle power. All right. And going back to there, you'll see that is controlled by an output, which we're setting up now. And again, the other side gets the same ignition 12 volts that the other wire on your ECU gets. But this relay gets fed with a permanent 12 volt supply via 15 amps. Okay. Just going to close that down. So again, so looking at our e-throttle relay, it's auxiliary 4. So if we go into here, auxiliary 4, ETCSI relay, and that's all correct. Okay. You can test the relay. That's what this one down is over here. Obviously, the relay is, we're giving a ground to the relay to activate it. The other side is getting 12 volts as per the diagram you saw there. Now you can set the PWM frequency, and that's obviously for the stepper mode that's built into the drive-by-wire throttle. So again, this will be determined by your throttle itself. You probably have to look at the information that you get from there. A thousand hertz works absolutely fine on these three UZ throttles, and I've not had a problem with it. So we're going to stick with that over there. Then coming down here, you've got P, I, and D. Okay, you've probably, if you've been looking at ECUs, etc., you may have come across um, tuning the PID. That's exactly what these figures are over here. So. These are things you're going to set up on the throttle itself, and you have to do it while you're using the throttle and you're using logs and so on and so forth. Okay. Tuning PID is a very, very large subject. I don't have time to cover it in this small little video. If you do want to do it, there's loads and loads and loads of resources on it from the guys like HPA Academy, et cetera, et cetera. But basically here it gives you a brief description of exactly what it is. Um, there are much better explanations of what it is with these. These are still, uh, to most people probably won't make much sense or et cetera. But it gives you a little sort of value from there. So I'm using values because we've done quite a few 3UZs on links. Um, so I'm using pre-known values that I've set up before in the past. That's what we've got over there. The other option is obviously, it's called when stalled, but effectively what it means is you can either have the uh, run throttle. So that means, as it says here, the throttle is controlled as per normal when the engine speed is zero RPM. So the throttles give off a bit of a hum. Some people don't like it, some people do. Um, so again, the reason they give you this option is to basically say, right, if there's zero RPM, the throttle won't run. So you won't get that humming noise from the throttle. Um, and that'll be the quiet throttle setting. If you want the throttle to work from the second you turn the ignition on, you just choose run throttle. So again, in our case, because obviously we are not going to have the engine running for this particular setup, we're just setting it up um, on the bench here. We're going to go run throttles because otherwise we're not going to see the values that we're looking for. Okay. So that's basically that setup over there. So again, I've changed all some of that. So we'll store that from there. Now moving on. Now we did in our input setup, go through exactly how to set up all these inputs on here, but that's your main TPS and that's your secondary TPS. Okay, so that's gonna give you your voltages there. You put in your error values. So in other words, if you disconnected, that'll go to zero. It'll then say there's an error. So you can set these values depending on your setup, but this is normally quite a good setup. It's the chances of going below 0 0.05 and going higher than 4.95 is very slim. Uh, but again, it depends on your throttle. You need to check that on your throttle and make sure you're gonna be fine there. Okay. And again, so they've got effectively the values here that we're going to calibrate anyway, but it's telling you what the TPS is when it's closed, what it is when it's open. And again, the same thing for the sub. Now, this little section over here, basically this is a good example because this has this exact same issue, is effectively the secondary sensor 
doesn't go the full length of travel. So in other words, the secondary sensor kind of hits 100% before the main sensor does. So how they've got around this is effectively they have set up this little thing. So when we do the calibration now, it's going to input this value. And what it's going to do is it's going to check when that main sensor stops in relation to the, uh, sorry, the secondary sensor stops in relation to the main sensor. So when you say 63.5% 63 TPS, what that actually means is the secondary sensor opens until the main TPS hits 63.5%, then the main TPS will carry on going to 100%, but that second secondary TPS stops. Now you are gonna see that physically when I go and do calibration. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on the little spanner to do the calibration. And as I do that, look down here, you're gonna see our TPS main and TPS sub as percentages. And if you have a look here, you're gonna see our voltages. Okay, and you're gonna see them go up and down as it does it. So let's just do that and you'll see there's zero and then it's opening up is a hundred percent and then it's coming down from there and you see there. So now it's calibrated from there and you'll see now it's changed out. So it's 65.5% of the main TPS is where the sub TPS opens up to. So again, we will store that in over there. So now that's our actual throttle sensor calibrated. So now we're going to move on to our accelerator position sensor. So again, our pedal has two sensors. We've got our main and we've got our sub. We've set them up as analog voltage three and four. And again, this is 100% because this particular pedal over here does not have that same issue where the secondary signal hits a certain point, then levels out while the main one carries on going. So if you see it's 100%, then that's obviously the reason it does that. So again, very simple procedure. Click on the spanner. And now we're going to calibrate the accelerator precision sensor. We click on OK. And you just follow the instructions. So all you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to press the pedal down all the way to the end and you're going to hit next and you're going to release the pedal and you're going to hit next. And there it is. All done and dusted. Okay, so I always advise people, it, the problem is that each throttle can be different because the actual TPSs are adjustable, especially on the well, the UZs and JZs that I know. They are actually adjustable. That is not the case with every single throttle, but in our case, because you can literally unscrew the TPS and move it, I always advise people to carry out these two calibrations before they start their engine just to make sure that everything is okay. Second part is especially with the pedal, okay, is you want to basically calibrate it and you want to mash it into the floor. Because the thing is, if you start driving and you go in anger and you and you just gently press it when you're trying to calibrate it, then all of a sudden in a corner, you absolutely mash the pedal down when you're full of adrenaline. Then the pedal goes, well, hang on, that's not where I should be. And then it freaks out and shuts down. So when you do calibrate the throttle, mash it in the carpet. Pretend you're doing 100 miles an hour around a corner. That adrenaline's pumping, mash it in there and get it done. That way, if that happens in real life, well, you've calibrated the pedal correctly and it's not going to go out of range and do that. Okay, so... Now we've calibrated our TPS, now we've calibrated our APS. So now if I sit here, and if you have a look down here, as I open the pedal, there you go, that works 100%. But you're saying, hang on, why is the throttle not opening? Okay, so what it'll do is whenever you do the setup thingy over there, it's gonna remove the target over here, okay? So effectively that is zero. So all we're gonna do now is we just, again, this is part of your tuner setup, he's gonna map your throttle it's highly unlikely that a completely linear throttle is going to be any benefit to you at all because as you know the more the beginning opening your throttle is going to create more of a difference than the last 20 percent so the first 20 percent is going to create more of a difference than the last 20 percent and so basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to effectively in this case i'm just going to use that column over there but you have the freedom to put up an entire table of exactly how you want it to run so again this is a field this is something you have discuss with your tuner exactly how you want it but yeah so it's very unlikely that the linear thing like this is going to be correct for your one over there but now when i open up my aps you'll see my pedal goes down and it moves like that okay so let's say for instance that what you call it, 1,000 RPM, you might want to have the throttle open at 5%. So specifically when the actual pedal is sitting dead still, 5%. Might help with that a little bit. So you see TPS main there, that's 5%. If I move that to 3%, that goes down to 3%. I could have the throttle open 50%. There you go. So again, this is an entire table that your tuner can set up and he can make it exactly how he wants to. So again, like I said, it's very unlikely 
that having a completely linear one where 10% pedal is 10% throttle is going to be nice to drive around with. So again, discuss it with your tuner and then you guys can set it up exactly how you want it from there. Okay, but that is all the drive-by-wire setup. It's not a particularly complicated thing to do, especially with these guys. It's all really simple. You're basically telling it where the sensors are connected to and you're letting it self-calibrate and then away you go. But just make sure that your wiring is correct. So make sure that you have that particular relay that's on there. Make sure that all of your sensors work um, and make sure that that's thingy. And then obviously when you are done at the very end, you want to leave setup mode and you want to go into on mode. Okay, so now you have all the safeties built in that are built into the system from there. So if it picks up weird signals or whatever from there, then it will shut down the throttle. And that's what that specific relay is for. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's been helpful to you guys. And we'll carry on with the rest of our videos as we go along. So we'll see you again. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.